Greetings, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation episode 87. I'm Jeff, and if this is your first time here, welcome to your one-stop weekly shop for everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. This week we're covering every new indie game releasing from October 10th through the 16th, and after we're done there, we'll go check out all of the indie deals on the eShop to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. New episodes post to podcast feeds on Tuesday as well as on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel, where you can find Let's Plays, the Friday afternoon special, and a bunch of other Nindy goodness. We're brought to you in part with help from our friends at the Nintendo Village, so be sure to go check them out for all of your Nintendo needs. And if you want to get involved, please do so by leaving a note in the YouTube comments, chatting with us on Twitter at Nindy Nation, or joining us this Thursday at 10 p.m. for another Nindies at Night livestream. We've got a great show for you today with nearly 30 new Nindies to talk about and an excellent list of deals toward the end. But as you know, we first have to take a look at all of the games that snuck out onto the eShop in the last week. So without further delay, let's get right into it by checking out the seven neglected Nindies released since episode 86. Daddish is not the next TV show made by Tyler Perry, but it is in fact a radish who also happens to be a dad. In this cute action platformer by Thomas K. Young, You'll traverse 50 levels with all of the usual challenging platformer obstacles, but the presentation, humor, and music is all really well done. Daddish launched for 10 bucks, which might be a bit high, but this is definitely a wishlist-worthy title at the least. Farsight Studios must be made up of a bunch of people who spend a lot of time at the bar, no offense, because they have a long history of billiards, bowling, and pinball games under their belt. Last week, they launched the officially branded Brunswick Pro Billiards for $19.99, and it contains some of the nicest presentation and breadth of game modes we've seen in this type of game. It's probably a good pick for all of you virtual pool sharks out there. And the high-quality, neglected Nindy train keeps on rolling with Ocean Media's hilarious point-and-click adventure, Captain Bra, A Brave New World, which hit last week for $9.99. Featuring interstellar travel, multiple playable characters, and a style reminiscent of the best adventure games from LucasArts, Captain Bra is yet another solid adventure title ready to tease your brain. Now don't be too scared, but next up is Terror Squid, and it's an incredibly unique take on the bullet hell slash snake style game from Nindy Newcomer's Try Apt for $9.99. It takes place on a sphere, and as you move, you leave a trail of bullets behind you that you must continue to dodge. Think of it as a hardcore, spherical version of Snake. Ten bucks does seem too high for this game, but I know I'll be all over it once Terror Squid goes on sale. Another Nindy newcomer is Punch Punk Games, and they release yet another high-quality title in this week's neglected Nindy's list, with This is the Zodiac speaking for $19.99. With 70s-era visuals and a cinematic presentation, This is the Zodiac speaking is a psychological thriller based on the actual case of the most infamous yet never caught serial killer. With three alternate endings, there's plenty of replay value, and the fact-based storyline should bring a little extra spooky into this first-person adventure. Next, we have two titles that, based on publisher alone, I want to throw in the Nindy no-no pile, but they both look like they could be a bit higher quality than usual. So we'll call these questionable Nindies. Digital Game Group continues on their quest to port every mobile game possible to the Switch with last week's Death Race 2020 for $5.99. It's a very simple arcade racer where you move left to right and shoot things in front of you. It's probably not worth your time, but it could provide some mindless fun as you work your way through all of the things available to unlock. We'll consider this a Nindy maybe no-no. And as much as I want to immediately throw this next title under the bus, the team at Sabic have a game that doesn't look too terrible? 
Fight! is a 2.5D fighting game that reminds me of the slew of similar fighters from the N64 era, like War Gods, Bio Freaks, or Mace the Dark Age. Anyone remember those? There's a bunch of characters to choose from, and while it does look cheap and janky, I have a soft spot for this style of budget fighter. So at $9.99, we'll leave this Nindy just outside of the no-no category. With a surprisingly high-quality batch of titles, this week's neglected Nindies just might have something worth checking out for everyone. If you're picking one of these up, let me know in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. This coming week features another massive list of games. You know that in October, counting this week, we've already seen a hundred new games release? Don't fret though, citizens, because we'll help you find the good ones. And this week, there are quite a few that are worth your digital dollars. So without further ado, let's take a look at the 27 new releases hitting the eShop through October 23rd. The single release for October 19th comes to us by way of Thalamus Digital, whose previous work includes Minute and Secanoid. Their newest release is Death Ray Manta SE for $10 even, and it's a pretty cool typical twin-stick shooter where you've got the crazy neon elements and colorful lasers that all look really cool, but gameplay-wise, it's pretty standard arcade fare. On October 20th, a couple of games release, the first is Hyper Brawl Tournament by Milky Tea Studios for $22.99. Usually when I see a game like this, where it's something we see fairly often, in this case, futuristic soccer, football with combat and lasers, if there's a high price, I look up the studio because surely if they're charging over 20 bucks, you've got a pedigree. But Milky Tea Studios has only ever released Coffin Dodgers, which is... fine but I'm not sure that it justifies the high price for On Foot Rocket League. Second on the 20th is Outpost Delta by Hidden Achievement for $24.99. The description says it is a single-player, side-scrolling sci-fi shooter for PC. <laughs> so I really hope it can work on the Switch, too. <laughs> Does anybody proofread these things? I think we know the answer to that. Yeah, this is a Metroid-like, and it gives me similar vibes to Ghost 1.0, which is an awesome game I've been meaning to make a video on for a long time, but it's rarely on sale. Anyways, Outpost Delta looks fine, but there's a lot of these already, and this one's really pricey. So either it's the best there is, and we'll find out when reviews drop, or we should just wishlist it for now. On the 21st, we get three releases, which I'll cover in order of meh to holy crap, you gotta play it. Bullet Beat is a visually simple but arguably intense bullet hell shooter where everything happens to the beat of the noisy dubstep music. Did I sound like an old man yelling at the clouds then? Recent newcomer Turnox brings us Bullet Beat, and it's not gonna set the world on fire, but for five bucks, it doesn't have to. Horus is doing something completely different, though, and decidedly indie. Developed by Paul Hellman and Sean Scapplehorn, Horus is a classic-style platformer about a robot on a journey of self-discovery. Aww. The thing is, the gameplay mixes in just about every style of 8- and 16-bit format you can imagine. It released last year for PC and has received rave reviews by the vocal but small group of outlets who have reviewed it. At $13.49, Horus is going to be a great fit for those of you looking for something different, especially if you're looking for something retro. And we've got a long ways to go today, and at least three more stellar games to discuss, so maybe my mood will change. But as far as I'm concerned, we're getting our pick of the week on the 21st for a lower than expected price of $16.99. If you recall the Nindies at Night video with Hades, just before that game, I played through some of Scourgebringer, which has been an early access on Game Pass for a while now. It's a side-scrolling roguelike that is really focused on fast, ninja-like mechanics where you're dashing around each room, building combos and taking out enemies while seeing how far you can progress. It has all of the hallmarks of a great entry in this genre, including procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. I've been in the Discord with Flying Oak Games for most of 2020 and can say with absolute certainty that this is a dev that cares, listens, and is making the best game they can. 
And this week, Scourgebringer is Nindy Nation's pick of the week. Microids kicks off the big Thursday drop of 14 titles this week with a remaster of Asterix and Obelix XXL called Asterix and Obelix XXL Romastered. Get it? It's like a take on Roman. You'll get it in a minute. Asterix is a quirky franchise based on a comic strip dating back to 1959 about Roman warriors, and while it never took off too much in the U.S., I do think it's seen a pretty big reception across the globe. International citizens, let me know if this is a franchise you're familiar with. It spans comics, TV shows, movies, and of course, a few video games. This entry plays like a 3D action adventure with combat similar to Kingdom Hearts or Jack and Daxter, and they're usually very well reviewed. This entry is $29.99 though, so you'll probably want to be a fan of the source material if you're planning to dive in at launch. Coconut Island Games releases the point-and-click adventure to beat when they port their award-winning 2018 title, Luna The Shadow Dust, to the Switch for $17.99. One look and you'll see the stunning hand-drawn animation that looks somewhat like a Studio Ghibli film, and there's substance to back up the presentation too. With a story focusing on a kid's adventure and an E rating, not only is Luna a great adventure worth taking, it could also be a great entry to play with kids. And finally, after announcing the release date numerous times on this show, The Red Lantern finally sees release on the 22nd for 25 bucks. You probably remember this first-person adventure. It's about surviving in the Alaskan wilderness after an accident during the dog sledding race known as the Iditarod. Funny, I learned all about the Iditarod in 8th grade and never thought I'd live to see that education pan out as useful. But here we are. You'll search and care for your doggos and survive the harsh environment as you try to make your way home. And if you're a dog lover, I mean, this is probably going to be the game for you. So much so that the team at Timberline Studio actually implemented an option to ensure that your sweet doggos can never die, so you can tell them they're a good boy even after they fall off a cliff. After a couple weeks off, the Quantum Astrophysicists Guild is back with another solid release, this time developed by 4L Games and an isometric puzzle adventure called Fractor for only $6.99. This black and white adventure definitely brings the creepy and will make any fans of Inside or Limbo feel right at home, which is a weird thing to consider. Fractor looks like another solid choice for a puzzle adventure this week. They Bleed Pixels is a challenging 2D platformer that seems best described as Super Meat Boy with a couple of neat tricks up its sleeve. One is a combat system that uses only one button but still looks pretty deep, and the other is a checkpoint system where you earn and place them as you see fit. The developer, Spooky Squid Games, also made the fun and unique Russian Subway Dogs, and there seems to be a lot to like in They Bleed Pixels, so it could be another great pickup while it's selling at a 20% introductory discount for $11.99. Restless Hero is a similar side-scrolling platformer. This one is a bit more of an adventure and definitely runs at a slower pace. It's developed by Restless Corp and releases for $6.99. It includes an upgrade path that makes getting from the simple beginnings to the complex end-game challenges a rewarding experience, and otherwise doesn't do anything too exciting, but it does offer a nice experience for the price. You might be saying, Hey, I love me some challenging platform games, but what I think is missing from this week's list is evil cyborg cats and dimension-shifting pugs. And if that's the case, then Double Pug Switch by A Priori Digital is the game for you. Similar to the last couple games we've mentioned, you'll run and jump your way to success but get the added element of color-based platforms that require you to flip between parallel dimensions. Double Pug Switch falls right between the last two games we've talked about, both in terms of quality and in price, and sits comfortably at $8.09. We've seen Seven Raven Studios a couple times on the Switch, and while Metaloid Origins is a solid indie of theirs, most of their games have been mobile or DS ports of games that never exactly set the world on fire. This week, they port their Bust-A-Move clone to the Switch, and it's called Rusty Spout Rescue Adventure, and they slap a $7 price tag on it. This bubble-launching puzzle game is of a genre we don't get too many entries of, and it adds some fun battle mechanics into the mix for a reasonable price. 
One of my favorite moments of preparing the show each week is when I'm prompted to enter my age to see the next game. It could mean anything from a violent, brutal murder simulator to another underage anime schoolgirl romance. This week, however, it's the game that I'm sure Dead Drop Studios has been super pissed they have to release in 2020. Dropping at $12.74 in a time that can almost only be described as inopportune, Outbreak Epidemic is a third-person survival horror game that looks to play similar to the -the over-the-shoulder Resident Evil games, and it includes a solo campaign as well as two-player co-op and a horde mode. Dead Drop Studios is fairly new to the eShop, so there's not a bunch of history to go off of, but the gameplay and different modes look to offer a variety of fun ways to ward off the zombie apocalypse. At $12.74, Outbreak Epidemic could add some spooky co-op action to your October spooky lineup. Nolem is a chill puzzle game about sliding tiles and matching numbers. It's developed by MISC261, or Miscellaneous261, or MISC261, I don't know, and is published by Silesia for $1.99. Another title in the running for Nindy Nation's Pick of the Week drops on the 22nd, still a part of the Big Thursday drop, and is Goner 2 for $12.99. With the original Goner, Art & Heart built a side-scrolling platformer that throws in elements of run-and-gun and and a little puzzle-solving alongside an unsettling, purposefully gross art style. The original Goner is a great game that we've recommended multiple times, and now it's exciting to see what the studio, with publishing help from Raw Fury, can do with more time and budget in the sequel. The premise of these games are simple enough, but it's the execution that makes them so good. With a co-op mode and procedurally generated levels, there's plenty of content to justify the price. And while I haven't played the new sequel myself yet, Barring any unexpected issues, it's safe to say that Goner 2 will be a worthy addition to your library. Superland is the kind of game that is quite difficult to cover on Nindy Nation. It's a first-person, open-world mix of many gameplay styles that takes place in a literal sandbox as a tiny toy in a kid's backyard. There's about 20 hours of gameplay here, and it ranges from puzzles to shooter combat to base building, and it looks like a lot of fun. Unfortunately, it's really hard to give any further impressions without playing it for myself. Being published by Humble Bundle is a good sign, though, even if the developer Supra Games is currently an unknown quantity. At $20, it's probably not one to just take a blind chance on, but I know I'll be wishlisting it myself and watching for reviews, so stay tuned for further thoughts on Twitter at Nindy Nation. We've seen a couple of games from Art Game Studio recently, and none of them have been too inspiring, but this week's release developed by Majestic 12 could change that. Toolboy is a name that I don't think went through too many rounds of consideration, but is nonetheless a cinematic platformer very similar to the original Oddworld games. You play as a robot and work your way through cyberpunk-looking factory levels, collecting upgrades that provide all kinds of cool abilities to help your traversal. I am loving what I am seeing here, and 10 bucks isn't too much to ask to spend on an unknown. Like we just mentioned with Superland, I'll be watching reviews and further impressions for Toolboy very closely. And rounding out the week, we've got seven games releasing on October 23rd, starting with Cross Crush for $4.99. This is a funny little arcade game developed by Thin Ice and published by Rataleka, where you play as an elderly couple protecting their home by blowing up cars, right? You're at the bottom of the screen, and there's a stream of cars coming down at you from various lanes, and you have to set up traps to stop them from getting through. Kind of like Plants vs. Zombies, but Grandma vs. Cars. Boombit Games is back at it again. This time they've reskinned their driving game to let you drive trucks from point A to B, and for $12, you too can experience the wonder of Truck Driving Simulator. But don't do that. That was a joke. When I think of Supermarket Shriek, I think of the game whose album art I see on almost every device I own. I've never bought the game, but at some point it's been free on just about every platform there is. Well, it comes to the Switch this week and is not free, it's 20 bucks. The team at Billy Goat Entertainment and P-Cube essentially made an isometric racing game filled with zany physics, where you push a shopping cart through, among other things, supermarkets. 
Maze is a $7 first person maze brought to us by Ultimate Games. And, uh, yeah, it's a maze in the first person. Did I mention it's a maze? Nindy newcomers Puny Human released their side-scrolling space shooter Galicide on the 23rd for $12, and it takes the sci-fi neon-infused space shooter and throws in elements of shape and color-matching puzzles to get you thinking with both sides of your brain. This one looks cool. I'm going to keep my eye on it. Hook Games, a new publisher who continues to frustrate me with their simple, cheap mobile ports, brings Kakuratsu to the Switch for 99 cents. And as far as I can tell, it's Minesweeper. And last, but certainly not least this week, is another side-scrolling shooter. This one we actually played on last week's Nindies at Night stream. Unfortunately, the audio got pretty garbled in that video, but I would like to remake the video because Grood by Dragius Games is pretty fun. There's a cool kinda cel-shaded art style, and there's some perspective-changing tricks that keep things interesting to look at without messing with the gameplay. Overall, Grood is very hard and very straightforward, but I've been enjoying my time with it and do intend to keep going back. For only five bucks, even with a limited scope, I think it's a fun, challenging, and simple shmup worth considering. 27 brand new releases this week. Phew! It's been over a month since we've had a week with less than 20 new releases. That's nuts. There's a lot of great content this week, though, so let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation what stood out to you. Moving ahead to the deals of this week, it's as if someone said, Hey Jeff, you know those games that you always demand people buy? What if we put all of those games on sale at the same time? Because that's exactly the case this week. In fact, there's only one or two titles on here that I haven't recommended multiple times. If you've got some eShop dollars burning a hole in your digital pocket, or there's some games that you've just been considering and never really pulled the trigger, now is the time to pick a couple of these games up. Because with 471 games currently on sale in the Nintendo eShop, these are our picks for the best Nindies on sale through at least October 24th. Moonlighter is a game I know you've heard a lot about. Half of it is a Zelda-style dungeon crawler, and the other half has you running a shop selling the wares you gathered while in said dungeon. Everything about this game is incredible, and it's a game that I personally slept on for a long time, but I am so glad I dove in. This week, the time is right, citizens, because at a new all-time lowest price ever, Moonlighter is 66% off for only $8.49. Oh, and it may go without saying, but there's plenty of replay value here, because Moonlighter contains procedurally generated dungeons, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! <sighs> oh, Cat Quest, how much I love your simple top-down hack-and-slash gameplay, practically illegal amount of charm, and plethora of cat puns. I swear, this game is so adorable, it'll make you shoot rainbows out of your butt. It's a perfect game for mindless grinding while you're hanging out on the couch, and this week it is 85% off for a buck 99. And... <laughs> Children of Morta is Nindy Nation's 2019 Game of the Year. If you like Hades, think of Children of Morta as the same formula and everything that makes it great, but with Diablo-styled top-down hack-and-slash dungeon crawling. The narrative that this game weaves into the gameplay is also stellar, and, I mean, come on. It was my favorite Nindy last year. If you don't have it yet, give it a shot. It's currently 41% off for $12.99. Oh, and this is another one where you'll get that bang for your buck because Children of Morta also has procedurally generated dungeons with roguelike mechanics and RPG elements. Rive was recently covered in our action-focused Nindies We Love video for its mix of Blaster Master-like gameplay, gorgeous visuals, industrial metal soundtrack, and wisecracking trucker that just wants to get the hell out of a hostile space station by any means necessary. 
It's really hard to see how Rive could be any better of a game than it is. But with an 87% discount for only two bucks, that's a great next step. Steam World, the Steam World series. We've talked about these a lot and they're back down to their usual extremely low prices. Hey, if you haven't played Steam World Dig 2 yet, just do it. It's a blend of downward digging, roguelike gameplay, and Metroid structure that is just infectious, and it's 60% off for $7.99. If you've played that and you want to try out the turn based tactical RPG formula, check out Steam World Heist, 75% off for five bucks. And if you prefer your Steam World as a JRPG, complete with deck building card combat, then Steam World Quest is half off for $12.49, which I think is the perfect price for that game. I don't really know what happened to Chasm. It's a fantastic exploration-focused action platformer that really nailed the procedurally generated format, but it almost seems to have been forgotten about, which is, I think, because it launched with some issues that have since been all ironed out in patches. I think more people who dig side-scrolling exploration should give Chasm a shot, and with a 40% discount, 12 bucks is a great price to jump in. Toki Tori 2 Plus is the remake of a port of a version of a something something something. It's a wonderful puzzle platformer that is cute as heck, and it originally released on the Game Boy Color, and it is perfect for some relaxing puzzle solving. At 87% off, $1.99 won't break the bank either. Sky Racket is one of the most unique twists on its respective genre that I've played, and that's saying something with what we cover here. Sky Racket is a side-scrolling shmup with a very friendly, colorful art style, but it's actually kind of a tennis game as well. You gotta watch some videos to really get the gameplay here, but basically it comes down to adding in a mechanic that keeps things more engaging than most shmups which have you just holding on the fire button while you maneuver around bullets and obstacles. And at 75% off or $3.74, it's a great deal that is even more fun in co-op. We've already talked about the exciting Goner 2 releasing later this week, but if you want to see where the unsettling, weird, side-scrolling platformer got its decidedly more black and white start, the original Goner is only $1.99, an 80% discount. Super Epic The Entertainment War is one of the most ridiculous backdrops to a Metroidvania I have ever seen. In a world where a single company now creates all video games, you, a raccoon riding on a llama, must explore a castle in a very similar format to Castlevania Symphony of the Night to reach the corporate overlords and bring creativity and variety back to video games. In this surprisingly fun and competent title that is fairly new and half off for $8.99. This is the kind of week where I really want to hear that people are trying out games like Children of Morta, Moonlighter, Sky Racket, really any of these deals because they're all such a great price for some awesome games. Let me know what you're picking up in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Last week, I asked you for some of your favorite spooky indie games so that we can read them here on the show. We got some great answers to start with, but with such a long episode this week, I want to hear more from you over the next week, and then we'll read them all in episode 88, because I have a feeling a lot of those games that are spooky are going to be on sale. So keep your favorite spooky indies coming in the meantime. With that said, we've looked back, we've looked ahead, and we've found an excuse for you to spend those remaining eShop gold coins. So now, it's time for some self-promotion. Don't forget about all of the fun stuff happening on the YouTube channel, as there are now three weekly shows, including our Friday afternoon special, which is a quick roundup of a couple Nindy deals to help you kick off the weekend, and of course every Thursday night at 10pm Eastern you can find us streaming during Nindies at Night. Not sure what to play this week. Maybe Sky Racket, maybe Foregone, I've been having a lot of fun with that one, and I know a lot of people are curious about it, so maybe that'll be the one. Either way, I usually post the scheduled link a day or two in advance on Twitter, so go hit that reminder because it makes me feel a special kind of happy when I see that people are waiting for us to go live. 
I put a smiley face in my notes there, which is weird because that's kind of a hard thing to express. Can you hear me smiling? I'm smiling. And I'm also out of time for the week, so it's time to say farewell. Thank you so much for hanging out this week, chatting in the comments and on Twitter, and sharing Nindy Nation with others. Next week, we've got the revitalization of a classic franchise, two actually, a game that centers around a YouTube star, and a new entry from the creators of My Universe, My Baby, and I can't wait to dunk on it. Until next week, citizens, I'm Jeff, this has been Nindy Nation episode 87, and just to see how many of you are paying attention at the end of the episode, I'll give a free Nindy out to the first three people who comment and tell me either what your Halloween costume is this year or what your favorite costume was from years past. And I'll send the first three a code for a free Nindy, because those free games will surely be just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.